backlight bleed. This is an issue with almost all modern LED or LCD TVs. And here is how you can reduce this as much as possible and add as much detail as possible, getting pure blacks and reducing this bluing of the TV as much as possible. Of course, it's not going to be able to become an OLED um, like this black to the right of the TV here. You're not gonna get that from an LCD, but you can get very close. And here is the most important part. We need to be able to use the screen also in a right room. That means when the lights are on, of course, or the windows are open. So let's begin with the showcase that I'm gonna be using today. So here's the thing. This is the backlight bleed. We want to get rid of this as much as possible. So what I've done is I've gone into the TV settings and I've essentially dimmed the backlight as much as possible to the lowest point. And that looks way better. Another thing that I've done to fix this issue even more is currently we don't have any color, sharpness or contrast. So the image is very, very dim, but it looks clean from the backlight bleed. So keep that in mind. So I have other presets here that I've kind of lined up, just ignore them for now. This looks a heck of a lot brighter. Why? Well, we haven't actually brung up the contrast or backlight contrast at all. So the brightness of the TV hasn't actually elevated, but the perceived brightness has elevated because we added uh, color. We increased color from zero all the way up to 100 and we have color enhancement on as well, which makes some of the display seem way brighter than what it actually is. Which means that the um, that we talked about before, the uh, backlight bleed isn't actually occurring yet. So we have sheeted the LCD a little bit here. Now, what if we take the backlight LED brightness and increase it to 64%? Why not 50%, you might ask? Well, 64% on Philips LCDs, at least, is the like highest point you can go until the backlight starts to increase a lot, which means that that bluing starts to happen more frequent. So this is what happens then. And what I've done uh, essentially here is I've gone into settings. You can see 64 and the accurate measurement for pure black level on SDR on this TV is 55. Then on advanced, we have color enhancement on, color gamut on wide, and I have my, um, uh, D65 warm set there, which is custom. I have HDR upscaling off because it can add some bluing on the screen uh, and it also increases the overall brightness in the nits by about 10%, I'd say. Um, the dynamic contrast, instead of having it on medium, which looks really good in bright scenes, we will have it on minimum. It will be adding in dark details that we otherwise are missing out on. So that is nice. We are getting better black level detail than before. It does change the color shifting of the display ever so slightly, but it's very not noticeable for a normal human being. And then we're gonna adjust the non-linear setting for the luminance and contrast or the gamma for short here. And uh, the original mode looks like this. And originally I thought that the lowest mode looks the best because the transition from dark to bright uh, had way more of a smooth fade to it and shadows looked way more deep. But I've come to realize that that's not good on an LCD. So the more details we have on screen, the less of that pure black backlight bleed we'll see. So just increasing this helps this issue. However, here is the first issue. You can see the backlight bleed now starts to come in. If we uh, dial down the backlight contrast or the brightness again to zero, we can see that it's way better. But this is actually too dark. So the thing that will happen is when we're on a very bright scene, the brightness won't have as much of a pop to it. And we cannot get both uh, loose ends here fixed. So it's either or. Either we go super bright with the backlight, and this is actually good settings. It just looks horrible on camera. This is the recommended settings that I told you guys about before. 
And this is the newer recommended settings that I have right now. As you guys can see, it looks like we're cleaning the backlight bleed almost completely, but it's still remaining a little bit there, of course. And yes, the screen still doesn't look like an OLED and it still doesn't look as bright as on camera. It's 20% uh, brighter on camera, I'd say, than in reality. So yes, it's way better. But here's the thing. Dynamic contrast on a Philips LCD and most uh, Samsung TVs can look really good on medium. And it looks like this. But here is the problem. In dark scenes with this much backlight uh, contrast or uh, uh, luminance uh, in nits, it will become way too apparent with that bluing of the screen. We don't want this blue. So what I've done is I've taken the HDR upscaling and turned it off, which is that 10% peak uh, of the brightness. I've dialed that off instead of on, and I've turned dynamic contrast to minimum instead to add the black level detail back. And this looks like this instead. So that's way better. Um, so if you want the brightest display possible from your LCD and you want to get as little of that blueness as possible, turn that off and turn the minimum on dynamic contrast on and dial the gamma all the way to the brightest on the uh, non-linear instead of the darkest, and you will get better black level detail. However, I still think that my newer setting is better because it eliminates almost, I'd say 80% of the black light bluing that we're getting or the bleed, the backlight bleed, sorry. Um, but then again, natural is way cleaner. Uh, we actually have way more details here than what my camera is picking up. You can see there, it doesn't look like that in reality. So I have to like, yeah, my camera can't. Can't catch how it actually looks, so it's gonna be hard to uh, show off on camera, but it looks great and it looks way better than before. But here is the problem that bluing always happens. So, if you really want to fix this properly, you want bright highlights and bright specular highlights, uh, and overall just brightness where it's supposed to be and where it's not supposed to be, it's gonna be dark. Then you're gonna have to get a 200,000 contrast ratio monitor slash TV or an OLED that has infinite contrast ratio, which means one million to one, basically. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully this helped in any way. And I'm going to explain what I've done again so that you guys can understand. Color is maxed out, so it's no longer accurate to any measurement whatsoever, but it looks great in most games. Backlight contrast, instead of being at 100%, it's at 64%, but it's on my TV. I would recommend you to go 60% or 50% if it's on Samsung. Uh, by the way, I have no uh, back, uh, like, uh, backing behind it. I'm just saying that as, a, as an average guess to help you out uh, without actually even knowing how your uh, display behaves. You could have a very, like a way better LCD than I have. And in that case, you might not need to dial down the backlight contrast as much. Um, and then you have the black level on the correct measurement. You can check that out on YouTube if you don't know how to check that out. Uh, dynamic contrast on minimum and the gamma on the brightest setting. On my TV, it actually has minus four, but it's very obvious that on plus four, it becomes darker. So adjust it to the brightest. Check out how that looks on your TV. It looks If it looks weird, don't dial up dial it up all the way but you basically want as much separation in the image as possible so if that means you get more detail then i would go the brightest of course it's just good you don't want uh to lose details in the dark so yeah this is the setting that we had before oh i accidentally wait <laughs> i ruined the uh there that's how it looks that's yeah we Normally before had this looking at our TV with the settings and now we have this. So yeah, way better, but not perfect. It's still an LCD.